Hey guys, this is Derek Schomer, one of the developers for Dungeon Rustlers. Today what I want to do is go through a quick tutorial for you to get you guys up to speed and started. First we're going to kill off a few of these little slimes and we're going to grab some of this loot. Gold is what drives your ability upgrades and the better your ability upgrades, the better you're going to do within the game. And these slimes basically roam around the dungeon, they will let you kill them, I just don't get in their way and you'll be fine. When all the creatures for a stage are dead, you'll be given a portal. Jump through the portal to go to the next level. You'll also see the top times for that specific stage that you just completed. On to stage two. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to grab some of these score chests. These just give you some additional score on top of what you would get from killing a standard enemy. And I'll grab some gold while I'm here. One thing to consider, when you die, you're going to drop 90% of the gold that you have on you. So if you want to be able to gain any additional upgrades outside of what you have on your body, I suggest keeping some of these gold chests around just in case there's an accident. That way you can pick them up later and get some additional quick upgrades because you lose them all when you die. The first three styles of creatures you're going to encounter in the beginning of the game are going to be your slimes, skeletons, and imps. Slimes are pretty straightforward. Skeletons will chase you around the level. They will always find you and they will always attempt to kill you. Imps, however, these guys are a special creature. They'll only try to kill you when you're not looking at them. Otherwise, they're going to turn transparent and run away. You'll find that when they're combined with skeletons, they can become a formidable foe. So you may notice that we were able to purchase Ability 1, or the Short Sword Throw. This gives the knight the ability to hit enemies from afar, which is always a great advantage. Even though the first ability might be a little weaker from a distance throw, it does allow you to apply a lot more damage from far away, and the more damage you could do from afar, the better off you're going to be in the end when enemies start to creep up on you. You could play Dungeon Rustlers with two different mindsets, either trying to go for the highest score or for the fastest time. One of the keys to getting the fastest time is utilizing your rushing ability. This is sort of like the classic Super Mario Bros. B-Speed. However, in Dungeon Rustlers, it allows you to run for a small period of time denoted by the purple bar at the top of your screen, roughly 6 seconds. Once you've exceeded the 6 seconds, you're going to become exhausted and you're going to move at a half rate for almost 6 more seconds. So it really comes down to balancing how much you run by how much you let off of the run so that you don't exhaust yourself. However, if you pick up the purple endurance potions, it will replenish a lot of your run stamina. You'll find you can't pick them up if you're not running or you're not exhausted. Keep an eye on your ability bar. The bar will increase as you pick up gold, allowing you to select different abilities. But if you bypass an ability and a new ability is selected, the only way to get some of those prior abilities is to spend your gold on the abilities that's selected or continue collecting until you can buy the next ability after that. And that, my friends, was a bomb. Classic to some retro arcade games, it pretty much is a screen wipe. Outside of some stronger enemies, everything on the screen is gonna die. You have three bombs per life, or you can collect enough gold to use the one that's on your ability bar. However, keep in mind that once it wipes the screen, all the next enemies will spawn in. So you have a small moment to breathe before the next wave will attack you. Of course, if it was the last wave, the portal will open and the level will end. You might also note, when enemies spawn in on a line pattern, They'll stay in that line until they're hit. Once you hit them, they go about their business doing what they normally would do. And these imps, they could be a real pain. Now, if you're like me and you're playing for score, because you find score is the coolest metric of awesome, pay special attention to all those little creatures with the yellow outline, that little yellow halo. Those creatures offer additional gold and additional gems. And you're gonna want gold, but you're definitely gonna want gems. That little gold outline creature appears last in the portal, and the amount of gems that it drops is gonna be relative to how many other creatures came out of its portal ahead of it and are still alive when it arrives. So to get the most gems from that creature, keep all of its little friends alive until you see it pop out of the portal. Of course, those little red chests offer score points. Here's a little trick. A lot of the stages within Dungeon Rustlers have small hidden areas that you just can't see unless you walk through them. Find one of these and you're gonna find extra points, more gold, and sometimes hidden health potions. Plus, it's, it's kind of fun to adventure. So if you're like me and you're playing for score, Consider this, all those gems offer score multipliers. So when you pick up one of those gems, you're granted either a 1% modifier, a 3% modifier, or 5% modifier, depending on what type of gem you've picked up, either emerald, sapphire, or ruby. Stronger creatures obviously give you more of the good gems. Every point you score from a chest or from killing a creature has their points multiplied against that multiplier you see up in the corner. So let's jump to stage 8 for a second so you can see the radial spawner. These are the little creatures that are going to come at you in a circle pattern. We have enough gold to buy our third ability, our sword and daggers. This makes life a whole lot easier. Although it doesn't overcompensate for stupidity. 
don't run into slimes. That's just weak. Okay, the fire element. These little guys act very much like an imp. They run away when you look at them. The problem is, when they run away, they spit fireballs in your face. This is where enacting the shield could be to your benefit. The shield protects you for a limited amount of time, or until it absorbs 10 full hits. Of course, if you mistime it, you take a couple fireballs to the girl piece. Okay, let's jump to level 9 for a minute. I'd like to show you some ambush points. Although one other thing to consider while you're playing, as you continue to buy speed boosts, you're going to continually get faster and faster. You'll find out fairly quickly a couple speed boosts, and you're walking as fast as you were running in level 1. You can find yourself getting wildly out of control very quickly, jumping into acid, bumping into enemies, so just be careful. It might not always be to your benefit to upgrade to a maximum amount of speed boosts, which is 5 stacked speed boost upgrades. Okay, so here here you can see the ambush point. When you get close to an ambush point, the spawn portal will pop up and creatures will start coming out at you. They're not required to kill, because as you can see, the portal is already open. They're only triggered by your proximity. I hope you enjoyed this beginning tutorial. Next time, we'll talk about your final upgrades, the ice minion and the fire minion. And we'll also demonstrate a few of the more dangerous levels, sort of like level 10. This is where things get real. But until then, head over to Steam, check out Dungeon Rustlers, give us a consideration for your next purchase. And if you've already purchased Dungeon Rustlers, we highly appreciate your business, welcome to the community, and I hope you continue to enjoy all the great advancements, the additional character classes that are coming down the line, and the next 25 levels, which are going to ramp up the intensity to the level of insanity. Please give us a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more tutorials and more gameplay videos in the future. Have a good one.